Have you ever found yourself alone, engulfed in the deafening sound of your own thoughts and wondered, how does this solitude affect my mind? This is often explored by renowned psychologist Jordan Peterson. Welcome to the exploration of a realm that Peterson and many of us often find ourselves in yet seldom understand, the realm of loneliness. Now let's take a moment to truly define what loneliness means as per Peterson's perspective. It's easy to misconstrue loneliness as merely the absence of others, but in reality it's far more complex. It's a state of mind, an emotional response to perceived isolation. Loneliness doesn't necessarily stem from being alone, rather it springs from the feeling of being alone, of being disconnected. Interestingly, solitude and loneliness are not synonymous. Solitude is a state of being alone without feeling lonely. A state where one can find peace, creativity and introspection. It's a chosen isolation, a welcome retreat from the world. Loneliness, on the other hand, is an unwanted isolation, a chasm between the relationships we have and those we desire. In our modern world, despite, despite being more connected than ever, we often feel alone. With the advent of technology, we've created a, a paradox, a world where we can instantaneously connect with someone across the globe, yet still feel an overwhelming sense of loneliness. This is because loneliness is not about the physical presence of people around us, but rather about meaningful connections and deep relationships. It's important to remember that loneliness is a universal experience. It does not discriminate, not discriminate, affecting people of all ages, from all walks of life. Loneliness is not a sign of weakness or a personal failing. It's a human condition, a reflection of our inherent need to connect belong. So, as we've established, loneliness is not just about being alone. It's about feeling alone, even in a crowd. Now explore how this feeling can affect us. And while we're at it, why not hit the subscribe button below? Stay tuned to our channel for more insightful explorations into the human mind. Loneliness might seem harmless at first glance, but it carries a hefty psychological toll. So what's happening in our brains when we feel lonely? Imagine yourself in a room full of people, yet you feel utterly alone. This feeling of isolation isn't just disheartening, it's harmful. Let's delve into the psychological theories and studies on loneliness to understand this better. Lonely individuals often experience a downward spiral triggered by the initial feeling of isolation. As the feeling of loneliness intensifies, the person's perception of social situations can become distorted. They may start to believe that they are being socially excluded or unloved, further reinforcing their feelings of loneliness. Renowned psychologist John Cacioppo proposed the evolutionary theory of loneliness. According to him, our ancestors who experienced loneliness were more likely to survive because they sought out social connections essential for survival. Today, this evolutionary response can be maladaptive, leading to heightened vigilance for social threats and increased likelihood of depression and anxiety. Numerous studies have validated Cacioppo's theory. For instance, the UCLA Loneliness Scale a widely used tool for measuring subjective feelings of loneliness has consistently shown a strong correlation between loneliness and depression. Not only does loneliness increase the risk for depression, but it also exacerbates anxiety disorders. When we feel lonely, our brains go into a self-preservation mode, making us more alert to potential threats. This heightened state of alertness can trigger symptoms of anxiety. The effects of loneliness aren't limited to mental health issues. It could also have physiological impacts, accelerating the aging process and increasing the risk of heart disease. In essence, loneliness isn't just a fleeting emotion. It's a chronic state that can impact our mental and physical health significantly. It can lead to a vicious cycle of isolation, depression and anxiety, making it more difficult to reach out and form meaningful connections. Therefore, loneliness is not just a transient emotion. It can have deep, long-lasting impacts on our mental health. But how do we combat this invisible foe? The dark cloud of loneliness can seem overwhelming. But remember, every cloud has a silver lining. There are ways to overcome loneliness. Why is it so crucial to rise above this feeling of isolation? Well, our discussion today starts with the human brain. It's a social organ designed to connect with others. It thrives on relationships and bonds. And when we deprive it of these essential connections, it suffers when we're alone. We're not just physically isolated. Our minds too feel the weight of this solitude. Chronic loneliness can lead to a variety of mental health issues, such as anxiety, depression, and even cognitive decline. It's a dangerous cycle that feeds into itself with loneliness causing 
mental health problems and mental health problems in turn exacerbating feelings of loneliness. Now let's flip the coin and look at the positive side. When we connect with others, when we feel understood and valued, our brain rewards us. Positive social interactions trigger a release of feel-good hormones like oxytocin and dopamine. These hormones not only make us feel happier, but they also help to reduce stress and anxiety. Our minds become healthier and more resilient. Furthermore, our relationships with others can give our lives meaning and purpose. They can motivate us, inspire us and help us grow. They can provide us with support in times of need and they can give us joy in times of celebration. By overcoming loneliness and establishing these connections, we can enrich our lives in countless ways. But it's not just about the quantity of our social connections. It's about the quality. It's about forming meaningful relationships with people who understand us and value us for who we are. It's about finding our tribe, our community, our place in the world. Overcoming loneliness then is not just about feeling better. It's about promoting the overall health of our minds. It's about living a richer, fuller, more meaningful life. It's about unlocking our potential and becoming the best versions of ourselves. Overcoming loneliness is not just about feeling better. It's about promoting the overall health of our minds. But how can we do this? Overcoming loneliness might seem like a mountainous task, but with the right strategies, it's within everyone's reach. To begin with, let's talk about shared interests. Engaging in activities you enjoy not only distracts you from feelings of loneliness, but also provides an opportunity to connect with others who share your passions. Whether it's painting, cycling, or a book club, shared interests are a great way to foster connections and ward off loneliness. Next up, consider volunteering. It's a wonderful way to shift the focus away from oneself and onto others. It can also provide a sense of purpose and satisfaction, which are vital components of emotional well-being. Whether it's at a local community center, a soup kitchen or an animal shelter, volunteering can help you feel more connected to the world around you. Therapy is another effective strategy. Speaking with a professional can provide a safe space to express your feelings and explore the root causes of your loneliness. Therapists can also provide tools and techniques to manage these feelings in a healthy way. Embracing solitude, paradoxically, can also be a powerful way to combat loneliness. It's important to differentiate between being alone and feeling lonely. Being alone can be a time for self-reflection, creativity and personal growth. It's about finding contentment within oneself. And once we can do that, we can start to see our alone time as something to cherish, not dread. Lastly, changing our perception of loneliness can be incredibly helpful. Loneliness is often seen as something negative, but it can also be a signal for change, a prompt to evaluate our lives and relationships. In this way, loneliness can become a catalyst for personal growth and transformation. So let's recap. Find shared interests, volunteer, consider therapy, embrace solitude, and change your perception of loneliness. These strategies aren't quick fixes, but with time and effort, they can help change your relationship with loneliness. Remember, loneliness is not a life sentence, it's just a state of mind and states of mind can change, so let's change ours. So we've explored the tangled web of loneliness, seen its impact on our mental health and discovered how to overcome it. We've delved deep into the intricacies, understood the psychological implications and emphasized the importance of overcoming this state. We also shared valuable strategies, tools that can help you navigate through the dense fog of loneliness. So stand tall. In the end, remember, you're never truly alone. There are always ways to connect, to reach out, to change. So don't let loneliness win.